So you want to record your stuff too, right? Yes, if it's possible. What are we talking about today? We're going to, we're talking about Babylon GS and we're, and we're here. So, is he there? <laughs> I'm gonna hit you with the stick. Almost, almost. Why are you doing this to me, David? How did you do that? It's Babylon. <laughs> Wait, this is running Babylon? Yeah. So meta. So this is your blog, right? Yeah. Your website? Mm -hmm. How does that work? Two lines of code. It's in the purpose of this uh, if dev. What's the workflow of somebody building, let's say, a Babylon JS game? Like, what are, what are the tools that they use to build this? So they can use any kind of computers that are either running on Windows, Linux, or Mac, because, mm -hmm. because it's web, obviously. And then you need that to have 3D models, so you can use GLTF from tools from sites like Remix 3D, which yeah. uses uh, Babylon GS or Sketchfab or whatever. Mm -hmm. You're going to take some models. You can use 3D Studio Max or other tools using FBX and convert that. And then you can, you're can you going to load that in a Babylon GS scene uh, and have a render loop, which is, which is really is the same approach you have in other gaming mm -hmm, engines. Mm -hmm. You've got a loop to manage, updating the logic of the enemies. Of, uh, and we are managing everything linked to audios, to animations, to 3D rendering, to uh, optimization of the performance. We have a lot of set of features inside that yeah. in order to let people to concentrate only on the game and not, you know, on complex stuff like mathematic computation or whatever. Yeah, who needs math? Yes. Yeah, yeah. You don't need yeah, math. You don't need math. Yeah. <laughs> the first line is loading the thing mm -hmm. and going to display it. So we're doing all the rendering, loading geometries, loading textures and managing checking the platform you're running at, yeah. if you got support for WebGL 1 or WebGL 2. So we're doing a lot of stuff behind the hood. It's magical. So you don't have to worry about it. You can run no. this on any browser. And exactly. Just, yeah. So the same page, the same uh, website is going to run on your iPhone, Android devices, Windows device, whatever. Yeah. And so once you've got that, the idea is now, because the, uh, the purpose of this video is to let you know how to build VR, VR stuff on the web, is how to switch to uh, now uh, WebVR. Okay. Uh, the last thing I've been implementing in Babylon GS in 3.1, uh, I've named it the VR Experience Helper. Okay. Because in 3.0, you were able to build WebVR experience with a lot of code. And the idea was to simplify that a lot. So you can see that as we are built on top of TypeScript, we have IntelliSense in our mm -hmm. uh, playground. So if I'm pressing dots, I'm searching for create default something, I've built this new uh, function with some potential uh, parameters. Yeah. And we are done. When we've done that, if I'm now running the code, it's going to reload the, the theme, and you will see a button on the bottom right with the an headset, an That's icon right. of an headset, meaning that when you will press this button, I will move to um, to, to, to VR. Oh, cool. And I can already move the, the using the mouse. And if you got uh, a device like a Surface or a phone, if you're moving the phone, mm -hmm. like using the accelerometers, it's going to update the camera position. So that's built in. You don't have to write any code or enable that. It just automatically just realizes. Exactly. So what we, we're trying to enable most what most people will need by default. Mm -hmm. They can tune it using the option. But most of the time, people will use that and they will be happy about it. So we are managing to embed That's a lot cool. of code inside that. So you see, there's no difference between building a scene in 2D mm -hmm. or on a 2D screen that moving to WebVR. Because if now I'm pressing on this button, you see that I've got a double rendering because yeah, we are stereo yeah. stereoscopic rendering. If I'm displaying what we're seeing in the mixed reality portal, you can see that the heads, while, while moving the headset is moving the camera also. And you see that I've managed to load the exact same model as the Samsung Odyssey mm -hmm. uh, because we are taking care of that for you. So you don't have to do anything wondering where is the models, how to map that, and it's going to update automatically. And we even have, when I'm moving the oh, stick, yeah. you know, it's updating the model. So you got uh, also, when if I'm pressing this, the trigger, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. So we've got built-in animation, we're loading from the, the CDN. If you got an Oculus Touch, we're going obviously to, to load the Oculus Touch model, the same for HTC Vive. Okay, so you already take care of that part. The same code is going to run on any kind of platform. Maybe some people just want to have like, uh, looking around without any kind of interactivity. Yeah. So if they want now to add interactivity, you need to have 
to take the VRL per object. And on top of that, you've got enable interaction for which city deportation has that one code, that's it. And that's it. So now if I'm running the same step. Before we get to it, how did you enable the actual clickable uh, area on the model? Because I don't see anywhere in here where it's actually enabled. Yes, it's, it. it's, it's, it's serialized the in the scene. So oh, really? in our scene format, we've got cameras, animation, lights. So now if I'm, so obviously I can still click. Yeah. But now if I'm switching to VR, I should be able to, so I need to go inside. So please don't, do anything. Lost, though. don't do anything stupid with me. I don't me. know what I'm going to do without you. And you see now I can enable like on the laser and if I'm clicking with the trigger it's going to to enable it. Oh, and, really cool. and I can I so can do that on the one. Yeah. Uh, yes, obviously. And if you got a gamepad, uh, you can just have a look, you see? If I don't have any controller, I can look on the specific and models. Just, oh yeah, cool. And, and you can use like the, the trigger of the gamepad yeah. and it's going to work. Like an Xbox controller. Exactly. And you can see we've got other interactive elements yeah. there. But we are too far away, so we need to find a way to move over there. So we see that just up there. So how do you move? Good question. Can you just walk over? I mean, there's a wall here physically. <laughs> we, you can walk because we've got room scale. But yeah. as you said, your room is a little bit too small. I'm so sorry. And, uh, yes. I was, I was thinking that in the US, everything was really big enough. But to navigate in VR, we like to do teleportation. You can move using, you know, smooth movement, but a lot of people are going to be sick, so the best option is teleportation. Plus, you don't have usually an open space to move around as if you're in the yes, world. Yes, yeah, so you can walk, but sometimes they are simulating the fact that you're using the joystick or the yeah. same sticks to move forward, so the camera is moving without you to yeah. Besides sort of own body moving, so people are. Oh, yeah, I get sick so much with those yeah, games. So people tend to like that. I don't like it. I don't like it either. So, so most of people tend to prefer teleportation. Best is to offer both of them to yeah, people. Yeah. So, what I'm going to do is rather than just enabling interaction, going to enable teleportation. Teleportation is going to enable movement, but also interaction. So, it's both features in one night of code. And you need to specify what will be the floor. Because okay. if I'm going to do some heat testing, sending a ray on top mm -hmm. of a mesh, yeah. a 3D object, I need to know what is your floor. So you're going to provide either a name or an, uh, an array of objects, mm -hmm. because you could have steps or stuff like that. So, and your name is Ale. Ale, because we are French people, and when we are doing building our 3D models, we're using French words just to be sure that other countries won't understand what we're doing. So you're keeping the trade secrets of mm -hmm. yourself, I get it. So. <laughs> So again, I'm pressing the VR button. Now I should have my controller over there. So now um, I can still um, click on element. Yeah. Now if I'm rotating, uh, uh, I'm using the same stick and moving right or left. Yeah. I'm doing a 45 degrees rotation, exactly like in the Cliff House. Mm -hmm. If you don't notice, it's our no 3D room in on in Windows 10 in VR. And I've really been working with those people to uh, mimic the animation. So I'm going to target the floor, releasing. Oh, and so you press it and then you release it. Yes, exactly like in the Cliff House. Yeah. And the animation, I'm going to lower down the field of view to avoid people to be sick, are exactly the same as in a cliff house. So now I can move near those little stuff and I've got Clippy. You see, can I enable it? Whoa, is that really Clippy? Yes, it's Clippy. Oh yeah. I can go there oh, and Clippy. check for Clippy. Hello, Clippy. Uh, R.I.P. And I've got uh, Schrodinger, Schrodinger card, so we now know that it's, it's dead. dead. So we know the answer to the question. Okay. And so I can move around the mansion here and try to find some object like this guy is playing piano and uh, that's it you see that in the uh, two lines of code you weren't kidding that's uh, yes it is two lines of code so you don't have to worry anything about specific of what VR you just build your 3D scenes or 3D games or whatever you're building in Babylon.js and you just say I want this in VR exactly in exactly you, you get it Okay, we'll, we'll share all this stuff. If anyone has any questions, we'll um, send them your way. Anybody okay. can go get yeah. it, and that's it. And we've got a great community. Don't f feel free to go on the forum, ask questions. We are very active, and uh, feel free to contribute also if you want to. It's an open, an open source project, so if you want to add new VR features, new control in 2D, mm -hmm. come join us and have some fun. Well, uh, thank you for coming all the way from Paris 
to talk to, to me yeah. in my office. It was the main purpose of my trip is to yeah. come to see you and to offer you a great headset. So thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh, you can go now. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Yeah, David. She's out of the office. Is it true that uh, Babylon GS was Babylon Sharp first, and then it, it became JavaScript? The previous version it was a Silverlight Five version. So that's the was the original one. Yes, but everything has been rewritten, and it was much more smaller than what we got. It was, but uh, the concept, the idea of so file format was almost the same. Like, don't be upset. You do some JavaScript soon, I know. I did. <laughs> and by the way <laughs>